Assalamu alaikum, Jamil, and congratulations on your great trip. Uh, wa but, but wa now it's time for a little serious conversation all from right. what you visited, what you saw. So you traveled all around the country, went all over the 50 states, uh, visited mo mosques in each state. And so you are probably the only eyewitness to Masajid in America. Yeah, I was uh, fortunate to visit many, many institutions and literally thousands of people within the span of 35 days. Very fortunate. The, the, the nature of the American Muslim community is such that uh, institutionally it's very impoverished in the sense that we, we have very few institutions other than the mosques. So wherever there is a Muslim community, you have a masjid, a halal meat store, and then maybe an Islamic school. So given the fact that the mosque is uh, such a fundamental element of Muslim communities in the U.S., uh, the mosque is a kind of a mirror of the Muslim community there. So tell us what kind of Muslim communities do you think these mosques are producing? Well, I mean, you said it most eloquently that we are very much within the infancy of establishing our institutions. And I had mentioned this in many of my speeches that, you know, we had been here for a very long time, but in different phases with different agendas. So predating Columbus and then the enslaved Africans, the civil rights movement, more recently the immigrants, and they are the ones who are pretty much credited and charged with building these institutions. Although they're, they're limited, they're still within the infancy of their development. And so when we talk about what type of communities that they're producing, they're producing communities you know, that actually are attracting people to them only and simply because it is the house of God. You know, so when someone comes into a community, they are obviously going to attach themselves and affiliate themselves with the masajids first and foremost. But we're way, way behind with regards to organizational uh, development. For instance, you know, right now, it's still unclear with regards to what is the role of the imam, right? He's wearing 50 different hats. He's a marriage counselor. He's the clergyman. You know, he's the funeral director, so forth and so on. A lot of the people who sit on the boards are people who are not paid people to be on boards and not necessarily qualified according to position. For instance, the treasurer may not have a background in finance. A lot of these places still don't have executive directors with qualified MBAs, right? So because of that, you've got a lot of people who are doing things based upon their own intellectual capacity or maybe they're bringing baggage from their old countries back here. And because of that, the development, I think, is stunted to a certain degree. And what happens as a result you know, of this, if you want to call it inertia and red tape, this exclusivity, not because they mean to be this way, is that there are those people who come and they pray. And that's all their involvement is. And you have those type of these individuals who do want to make a stake as far as leadership is concerned within these organizations. And then those people who try to get in, but then they get blocked, and then essentially they're on the fringes. Yes, I mean the mosques do start as, I, I like to think of them as necessary service providers. That's right. how they begin, by providing necessary service. But given the fact that they also become the central hub of the communities, uh, it, it becomes, uh, I think, their responsibility in, in shaping the, the character of the community. For example, one of the issues that is now constantly raised by mainstream media as well as uh, Muslims themselves is about uh, the, the spatial politics associated with gender. Right. So what are the patterns that you saw of, uh, of women's participation spatially in the masajid? So let's, uh, let's take that question and basically couple that with the question before, right? Those type of masajids and mosques that actually are running efficiently are those where the leadership predominantly understand and has integrated itself with society. They don't see it as an us and them scenario, right? So who are these people? What are the characteristics of these types of people? African American community is a big part of this, right? And then you have those communities where the turnover has come in, where the elders have passed on the baton to their children who are born and raised over here who understand and are assimilated with society. So those individuals not only are creating organizational plans which are effective, but they ha also understand the necessity of bringing the women into this space, empowering them, making sure that they have all the necessary resources to have a voice, and make sure that they are putting their input into all the different activities uh, and, and future planning that's taking place within that masjid. Everyone else, you know, you, you see that there is a spectrum, unfortunately. There's still a lot of people that don't believe 
that women should be coming to the masjid, that it is not necessary for them to come, uh, that it is not even something that they should even consider part of their daily activities and their routines. You have that end of the spectrum, and then you have the other end of the spectrum I visited where you, know, you have presidents of massages, you have chairpersons you know, that are female. You know, I get invited uh, often to speak in churches and synagogues, but now I have made a rule. It's, it's a humorous rule, but I insist that at least one third of the audience should be less than 30 or 40 years old. Otherwise, I'm very unhappy about going and speaking to really old people. Uh, in churches, we see a lot of young people. But when you went to these mosques, did you see to what extent were the youth involved in, in activities of the mosque, in planning, uh, in programming, other than attending the Friday prayers, or if they are too young to resist their parents uh, bringing them to Sunday school? I mean, besides that, do you see them actively involved in, in the life, uh, the spiritual life of the masjid? And it comes back to the culture of that masjid that, and the tone that the leadership sets from the beginning, right? If they understand their role as individuals who are trying to establish something and they have to apprentice people underneath them to take over and you prep them, then yes, you see a lot of, you know, leaders nowadays who are young people in their 30s and their 40s, born and raised over here, whatever the case may be, because that's what the leadership has prepped them to be. But unfortunately, these people are the minority. And the reason being is because most of the time when people come and they build something with their hands or they give their resources, they consider themselves to be shareholders or even stakeholders in some cases, right? There's a sense of ownership over there. So that's one part of the mentality. The other mentality is, is that they want to give the seat over, but they don't trust themselves enough, neither do they trust the other people. So when that happens, you have these people who are holding on for dear life to their chairs, right? And when they realize that they cannot physically move forward anymore, then they want to pass on the baton, guess what? Those people, the younger children, or who were the children at that point, the next generation, don't want to have anything to do with it. Why? Because you have excluded them. They have tried and you have excluded them, so now they're too busy building their own lives. You know, they're young professionals, they're trying to build a family, pay off their mortgage, save up for college education, and they have other things to do. So unfortunately, this is happening more often, you know, than the latter that I had just described to you. Thank you very much, Jamil. It was very enlightening listening to you. Thank you. He's not just a 50 mosque man, but I think he is also a witness to Islam in America. Thank yes. you. Thank you kindly for having me. We are on time.